Hockey Night in Canada, brought to you by Imperial Oil and Esso Dealers, Agents and Distributors. Ford, the better idea company with better products for you. And by Canadian National, CN in Action, building the Canadian dream. From the Boston Garden in Boston, Massachusetts, the 1970-71 NHL All-Star Game. Good evening, everyone. Ward Cornell here along with Danny Gallivan, Bob Goldham, Babe Pratt, Brian McFarland, and Jack Dennett to bring you the 24th annual NHL All-Star Game. Tonight's game marks the return of two very popular coaches to the coaching ranks as Harry Sinden, who retired from the Bruins after they won the Stanley Cup last spring, leads the Eastern Division while Scotty Bowman appears as coach for the Western Division for a third straight time. This is the third game in the All-Star format where the East meets the West, with the East holding the edge, one win and one tie. Tonight, the West team is determined to tie the series. There'll be lots of action tonight as Hockey Night in Canada returns with the team introductions in just a moment. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Danny Gallivan. This is Bob Golden. And we're here in the broadcast booth at the Boston Garden. The capacity here is 14,994, and that's the crowd we're going to have this evening. The All-Star attendance record, 16,587, was set in St. Louis exactly a year ago. And now it's time to get down to Frank Fallon and the introduction of the team. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. The Boston Garden and the National Hockey League welcome you to the 24th Annual All-Star Game, featuring the stars of the East and West Divisions. First of all, the NHL Western Division All-Star Team. From the Minnesota North Stars, on defense, number four, Ted Harris. Left wing, number 20, Danny Grant. Representing the California Golden Seals on defense, number five, Doug Roberts. From the Los Angeles Kings, right wing, number 17, Bill Flett. From the St. Louis Blue, goaltender number 30, Ernie Wakeley. At defense number 8, Barkley Plager. At center number 7, Red Berenson. Left wing number 14, Tim Ecclestone. And left wing number 11, Gary Sabarin. Representing the Pittsburgh Penguins, left wing number 22, Greg Polis. Selected to the first team at right defense in civilian clothes, Ken Schenkel. From the Philadelphia Flyers, center, Number 15, Bobby Clark. From the Chicago Blackhawks, selected first team, goaltender, number 35, Tony Esposito. Selected first team, defense, number 12, Pat Stapleton. Also a defenseman, number two, Bill White. At center, number six, Pitt Martin. And the first team center, number 21, Stan Makita. Right wing, number 16, Chico Mackey. And left wing, 
Number 10, Dennis Howell. Selected first team defenseman, number three, King Magnuson. Selected first team left wing, number nine, Bobby Howell. Montreal Canadiens. Defense number three, J.C. Tremblay. And left wing number 21, Peter Mahavlich. And left wing number 27, Frank Mahavlich. And right wing number 12, Yvonne. Conway. <laughs> Representing the Toronto Maple Leafs at center, number 14, Dave Keon. <laughs> From the Buffalo Sabres, center, number 11, Gilbert Perrault. <laughs> From the Vancouver Canucks, the Fetchman, number five, Dale Callum. <laughs> Representing the Boston Bruins. <laughs> At defense, number 20, Dallas Smith. <laughs> At right wing, wearing number 10, Eddie Westfall. Selected first string right wing, number eight, Kenny Hart. The first team left winger, number six, Johnny Busek. Selected as the first team center, number seven, Phil Esposito.
Select of the first team defense, number four, Bobby Orr. And coaching the Eastern Division All-Star team, the former coach of the Bruins, Harry Sinden. Ladies and gentlemen, would you kindly rise for the playing of the Canadian and United States National Anthem, played by John Kiley. Continue with our all star telecast in just a moment. And so the 24th annual all star game is about to get underway, and a fellow who played in a fair number of all star games himself was right here. Bob Golden, how many did you play in? Uh, Dan, I was very lucky. I appeared in six. I shouldn't ask a defenseman about scoring, but did you get a goal? I got lucky one night. I got a goal and assist, and. Uh, I felt very good about it, too. It helped us uh, beat Toronto Maple Leafs uh, back in 49. Well, wow, this should be a pretty good game uh, with the West uh, this year having the supply of hockey talent from the, the Chicago team to draw from. I think it will be a much closer game than we saw last year in St. Louis, just particularly for that reason, then. And the referee is Friday. He's working in his second All-Star game. John D'Amico, one of the linesmen, number nine, his very first. And Armstrong, Neil Armstrong, his eighth All-Star game. Esposito, Busek, and Hodge for the East. It's Berenson on with Chico Mackey and Bobby Hall for the West. Busek clearing at the center. Berenson over the line to Mackey, a weak shot, and there's Hodge trying to clear it. Brad Park. Great young defenseman of the New York Rangers to another fairly good defenseman, Bobby Orr. Now it's Esposito shooting it in over the line. He races in against Chicago Stapleton. Stapleton number 12. Now Hodge getting it back and it's intercepted. Mackey for the West, down to the line, over the line, getting set. There's a shot. He scores! Chico Mackey.
And a bullet drive by Chico Mackey as I think Brad Park partially, partially screened Eddie Jackham and we pick it up. That Chicago right winger taking a pass at his own blue line and carrying it up and just stepping over the Eastern All-Stars blue line with a hard slap shot. Thirty-six seconds. Last year, the first goal came after twenty seconds. Well, the West in front here, one to nothing, and Pitt Mark number six cleared it in. Here's Orr handing it off to Dallas Smith for the East across the line, and racing in there, Montreal Cornwallier number twelve. That brought about the offside. Bob, uh, last year, Le Perrier scored after twenty seconds, and then Prentice scored after thirty-seven seconds. One to nothing, Dallas Smith shooting it in. Ted Harris for the West. The West in the blue jerseys with red and white trimmings. They jam in on the board. And for the East, they have the white with the black and orange trimming. The weather in Boston is very, very cold. It's down to about three above at the present time. It's the coldest winter so far so they say here in the last 10 years. Now they eased everybody up, but Malone trying to get it back to the point. Danny Grant poked it out, it's knocked back in. There's Roberts taking over, clearing it out over the line. Sabra, number 11, here's Orr, and he's stopped by Ted Harris. Cornwallier, handing it off to Dallas Smith. He hits the line, in over the line. Cornwallier racing in, and Grant cleared it to the wing. Bobby Orr is shooting it, and a ricochet just wide. Harris of the West clearing it to the far right wing. Fails to knock it out. Finally, it rolls to center. Dallas Smith to Orr. Orr turning. One to nothing. The West leading here early in the hockey game. There's Orr clearing it in. Danny Grant lost it. Rattel has it centering it. Here's Cornwallier. Knocked off his stick by Roberts. Cornwallier centering it. Rattel around the net. Getting set to clear it in front. Cornwallier going after it. Now Roberts being watched there by Dave Ballone. Danny Grant ahead to Pitt Martin with Sabaran over on the right side. A pass to Sabaran. He couldn't pick it up. Cornwallier to Orr. Orr down fast. Makes a great move. Then he's upended. And Ted Harris is going off for Clifton. NHL power players. Save them. Trade them with SO Performance Gasolines. Now at participating SO dealers. So, an opportunity here now for the East. They trail one to nothing. Harris is off a tripping oar. The key on that center, a Howe and Frank Mahavli on the wings on the point. Brad Park and Orr. Magnuson on the fence with Barkley Flager for the West. Clark, a penalty killer with Ecclestone. Back it goes. Ecclestone tries to clear it out, but Clark comes to his rescue and gets it out over the line. There's Howe to Orr. Pass back to center, Ecclestone with it, and Flager. Sends it back into the east zone. In the penalty, one minute and 37 seconds remaining. Brad Park coming out slowly. It's Keon, Frank Mahavli, Cow, now or coming up. Here's Keon, clearing it into the corner. Clark taking over, being watched by Howe. Barkley Flager shoots it out into the center ice area. And in the early stages of this penalty to Ted Harris, the east. Galaxy of Stars having trouble. Here's Bailey Howe. Oh, a wicked shot. And that one off the arm of Esposito. Eccleston trying to clear it. Let's see. Penalty here. Frank Mahogany. I think.
minutes and nine seconds, the time of the interference penalty to Mahavlik. And that comes with a minute and five seconds left on the penalty to Ted Harris. They're playing five aside, but West leading one to nothing. Jim Nielsen trying to keep it in. He failed. Now Makita coming down with Dennis Hall. Makita shooting it, and then he was belted by Brad Park. Here's Stapleton on the board, but Park takes over. Stapleton dropping back to center. Brad Park with Peter Mahovlich. There's the pass from Nielsen to Peter Mahovlich. Down he comes with Gilbert Perrault. Perrault going in against Dennis Hall. Bill White clearing it to the far side. Dennis Hall out to center. A pass now off Stapleton's stick. Brad Park taking over for the East. Stapleton centers it. It's Jackman in goal for the East. Harold try to clear it up to the point. Now there are exactly eight seconds remaining in Ted Harris' penalty. Here's Harrow at the line, stopped by Stapleton. Stapleton ahead to Dennis Hall. He overstates it. Hall clearing it to the wing. Ted Harris is back on, and the West has the advantage. Harrow over the line, watched by White. And Flip coming out for the left. Goes to center. Now down on the line. Winds up for the shot. And Jackman stops it. This is four. Bobby Hall. Bobby Hall picking up the rebound after Jackman had made the save on Flat and Hall fired at all. We pick this up on a slow motion here, and we see. On the rebound, coming back out, and Bobby Hall at a bad angle from the side, a wicked slap shot. Eddie Jackman catching it just with his left pad and directing it into the net. West Coast, number nine, Bobby Hall. Test number 17, flat, time, 438. 438. With Hall getting the goal, flat the assist from the West, jumping off to a two to nothing lead. Magnuson over to Berenson, over the line, trying to get through there. Bobby Hall going after it. Now Dale Collin out to Esposito. He shoots it in. Here's Ken Hodge trying to take it. He fails against Flager. Back it comes to Trombley. He rolled it back in. Flager for the West. Out, a right wing pass. Esposito stopped it. Now Chico Mackey against J.C. Trombley. Trombley coming out with Juicy up on the far side. Here it is, a shot right on, and Esposito had no trouble with that. Two to nothing, west in front. Now on the boards, they fight for it. Esposito against Hall, and the play is stopped. 14.32 left in the period. Trombley and Dale Collin move up over the line. Esposito facing off against Clark. Ted Harris ahead to Young Polis over on the far side. Roberts over there for the west to Ted Harris. Ahead it goes to the line. Now Ecclestone hopping in there. J.C. Trombley laying it up on the wing to Busek. Ahead it goes to Esposito with Hodge. Esposito, he tied up. There's a shot by Dale Talon. Hodge trying to center it for the East. It's on the board, then Polis clears it down the ice. A.C. Trombley moving back, and the West called on the icing in practice. we get a moment, we might mention the fact that some of the people who should be playing tonight, Johnny McKenzie of the Boston Bruins, who suffered a bad shoulder injury on Sunday night and had an operation this morning to pin it. And Kenny Schenkel of the Pittsburgh Penguins who is out with the same type of injury who's not able to play for the West. Eats everybody up. Oh, a shot and that was a great skate save by Esposito. Quick drive by Cornoyer. Here's Talon getting it back. Dallas Smith has shot a loose shot. He scores! Cornoyer! Dallas Smith taking the shot. Cornoyer. Well, telling it in. 
Burn way a being right on the spot on that shot by Dallas Smith from the point. Esposito making the save. The puck was fed back by Bellon to this point. Esposito stopping the original drive, but Cornwoye trickling it in underneath Tony Esposito. So the West, two, and the East, one. East Red goal, goal the number 12, Conway. The third, number 20, Dallas Smith. And number 17, Bellon. Time to go, 6-19. 6-19. Dave Ballin, who now has the puck, also had an assist along with Dallas Smith. Danny Grant firing it into Jackman. And the crowd beginning to get on the New York goalie, who had it a bit rough on the first two goals scored by the West. Now over to Dallas Smith, off the board, down into the West zone, and White. From the ranks of the Chicago Blackhawks, and he's having a great year for the Hawks. He feeds it to another Hawk staple to note to Pitt Martin adds to Grant. Grant takes the shot off Orstick. Or in on the boards against Grant. And the crowd waiting for Bobby Orr, no doubt, to make one of these brilliant patented Orr rushes. This time he comes out slowly and feeds it to Dave Ballone. Ballone ahead of goes to Rattel. He dropped it back. Pitt Martin wheels back for the left. Now waiting for somebody to come up. There's Sabara up on the right side. Or getting in front of the weak shot. Cornwaye. Getting away from Martin up to Rattel ahead to Bobby Orr. Orr over the line. Orr still has it. A pass to Ballone, a backhand shot. And he was wide with it. They fight for it on the board. Cornwaye clearing it past Dave Ballone. Here's Stapleton. The East making changes, Staples in the long drive. Uh, Howe is now on for the East, along with Keon and Frank Mahavli. Off the board to Frank Mahavli, called on the offside. On Saturday next, Hockey Night in Canada will bring you on the entire CBC TV network, the game Detroit of Montreal. And this telecast will be brought to you in part by Imperial Esso dealers, agents, and distributors. Two to one the score here with the West leading the East. And scoring in the hockey game very quickly for the West with his Mackey unassisted. And then Bobby Hull from Flett, Bournoye from Smith and Ballone. And the crowd getting a bit restive. This game is getting tremendous exposure tonight. 51 television stations in the United States. CBC Network TV in Canada. And the Armed Services radio stations carrying the game. No all-star game as could ever come close to this one from the point of view of coverage. Now here's Brad Park. Down he goes to the line. Gordy Howe steps across. Park over to Jim Nielsen. Nielsen winds up for the shot. Esposito, the goalie, clears it. Flett starting out, passes ahead to Makita. A lead pass for Dennis Hall. And the East coming back. It's Keon in on the line. He was knocked off balance. Magnuson against Howe. Magnuson falls. Now Howe went after Makita. And Magnuson takes over. From the corner, Flager getting it out off the stick of Dennis Hall. Frank Mahavli. He joined the Montreal Canadiens from Detroit about 10 days ago. Out there, number 27, Nielsen shooting it in. Flager playing it on the board for Dennis Hall. Now a long pass on the right side to Flett. Flett going down to the line. His shot hit Nielsen. Now Jackman coming out. Up on the wing it goes. Now Hardly couldn't get anywhere. Magnuson cleared it back in. Now it's into the west zone. Off the board to center. Dennis Hall. Gilbert Perrault couldn't get it from him. Makita clearing it over to Magnuson. It goes to Barkley Plager. And they're having difficulty in the early stages, I think, getting used to each other. And there hasn't been that great fluid type of hockey as yet. 10-15 left in this, the first period. There's a lead pass for Perrault. Down the ice it goes. Roberts after it. He touches it. And the East call for ice. We saw Gordy Hull going off on that shift, and there was a lot of speculation just prior to this game as whether he would play, and talking to him, 
he felt with the number of injuries, had a bad elbow and a bad wrist, and uh, he didn't feel he could do justice, but he's certainly been a dominant figure out there on the two shifts he's played this period. Ted Harris and Roberts playing up on the points for the West. It goes now to Dale Callan, ahead to Peter Mahavale. Mahavale ahead to Perro going in. Over to Westfall. He's used. Oh, Esposito. A great save on Eddie Westfall. Westfall centers it again. Back it goes to Callan. There's the shot. And Esposito. Well, we're going to have some great saves here. Well, that youngster, Gilbert Perot, set up Eddie Westfall beautifully in front of the net. Eddie Westfall, about 10 feet out, had a great chance to score. But Esposito was great on that one, and he's coming up with a big save on that slap shot from the point. Here's that play coming in now. Perot setting up Eddie Westfall, and there's the save. And now, coming back out to the point. And uh, we didn't quite pick it up, but he came up with a great save off Bill Talon from the point. Nine minutes, 46 seconds remaining in the first period. The West two and the East one. It's Roberts taking over, being hounded by Peter Mahavli. Joda goes to Bobby Hall. Hall coming down on that left side, trying to get by Trombley, and he couldn't. Trombley ahead to Peter Mahavli. He has some great moves, but this time he couldn't get anywhere against Roberts. There's a pass. Bobby Hall going after, but Jackman comes out to clear it. Eddie Westfall down on the right side. Ted Harris went reeling. Now Perro almost set up a chance knocking down a high pass. Berenson over the line. The shot. And that one was just wide. Roberts keeping it in for the West. The West showing a lot of hustle here in the first period. They lead two to one. Trombley against Bobby Hall. Back it goes to Berenson behind the net. They center it in front, Ecclestone does. Now Ted Harris keeps it back in there. Harrell coming up. There's going to be a penalty here to Bobby Hall. Penalty coming up against Hall for hooking, I believe. Bobby Hall off for hooking, and Bob Golden, that was a great move by Perrell. Gilbert Perrell, he uh, actually turned Bobby Hall inside out, and uh, any wonder he got a penalty trying to check the youngster. Well, now we have Esposito, Busey, Gahad, Park, and Orr. In over the line it goes. Where is it? And it's cleared down the ice. We have Bobby Clark at Ecclestone, the penalty killers for the West on defense, Magnuson and Barkley Plager. Now Orr trying to get some room from the corner. Clark staying right in there, number 15. Orr out over the line with Busey, Gahad, and Esposito. Orr. Over to Esposito, dropping it back and comes to this side. Hodge after it. Barkley Plager shooting it back into the east zone. One minute and 18 seconds remaining in the penalty to Bobby Hall. Esposito is carrying the league apart point-wise this year. Coming out, gets it ahead to Hodge. Hodge back to Esposito, and it's called on the offside. Number four, Bobby Orr, who uh, probably got the greatest applause that I've heard in a long, long time from this very partisan Boston crowd, and well deserve it too, Dan. I'll be calling Mr. Everything here in Boston, and uh, he typifies the popularity of this game. Orr is shooting it, grabbed by Esposito. Magnuson clearing it, Brad Park stopping it, fake the pass, now to Busey. He tried to get it in front. Magnuson stops it. Here's Busey again. Magnuson ahead of goes to Clark. And he sends the East back into their own zone. Here's Orr, the crowd. They want him to get going. Here he is, full flight. Over it goes to Hodge. Back to Orr. He just missed it. Here's Brad Clark winding up. And his shot was just wide. Berenson for the West, taking over, clearing it to center. Clark. Ahead to Hodge over the line with Esposito to Orr. Orr is shooting it. Esposito blocked it. Here's Esposito, the forward back and goes to Bobby Orr, the shot. And that time, Plager got in front of it. Hit Martin. Brad Park fell no one near him. Ahead it goes to Berenson. He fakes the shot. Back it goes to Plager. There it is. A hot drive. And Jackman grabbed it. Penalized player, Bobby Hull, now back on. Off the board, Quinn Royer. He's in over the line. Stapleton goes after him. Now it's loose to the side. Esposito takes the shot. Looking for the Dave Ballone. 
but he couldn't get the shot past Stapleton. And it's opening up a bit here. Here's Stapleton hitting the east line. Over to Berenson, a shot, and he was away wide with it. Six minutes and 20 seconds left. John Rattel ahead for Cornwallier. Cornwallier loves to move on that head manning the puck. At that time, it didn't work, Bob. And he was in behind that defense, but a great move by Pat Stableman who picked off that long lead pass. And uh, he was long gone if he'd have picked that pass up because he had about four steps on anybody that was coming back on him. They seem to be getting used to each other, too. The, the well, door was opening up. It's really open up, and this is tremendous hockey. This last five or six minutes has just been great. West 2, East 1, 6 11. Left in the opening period. Pitt Martin is on with Danny Grant and Sabarant for the West. Grant clearing it in. Dave Ballone takes over. Here's Cornwallier. A pass to Jim Nielsen. Nielsen coming down. Rebound. And Stapleton there just ahead of Ballone to get it. Off the boards it comes. Pitt Martin over on the right wing at Sabarant. Sabarant winds up for the high drive. Danny Grant looking for the rebound, but Dallas Smith gets it up. Now Smith, a favorite here at the Boston Garden. His pass, Sabarin, turning at the line. Hit Martin, a pass back intercepted by Jim Nielsen, a hit to Rattel. Rattel has a lot of great moves. Here he is, clearing it in front, and it goes behind Dave Ballone, back to Nielsen, the shot, and a ricochet just wide, Stapleton. Ahead to Danny Grant. To Sabaran with that pass. And Nielsen, the big defenseman from the New York Rangers, hands it off to another Rangers to tell. Now Dallas Smith. Nielsen. Ahead to Rattel. Frank Mahovlich coming up on the left side and Flett knocked at the center. Dale Callen in on the line. Flett there again on the left side. Dennis Hall. He has a booming shot. There it is. Rebound, Jackman, doubling up. Four minutes, 43 seconds left in the opening period. The West leading the East, 2-1. Tom Blake cleared it for Frank Mahovlich. He couldn't come up with it. It's handed back to him. Now Fleck. He's passed, stopped by Howe. It's Howe, Keon, and Frank Mahovlich. Dale Callan to J.C. Tom Blake. Back to Talon. Talon, another great rookie. Shoots it off to the corner. How racing in against Dennis Hall. Now Ted Harris from the corner. J.C. Tremblay slapping it back in. Roberts against Keon. Ted Harris. A pass to Makita to Dennis Hall over on the right side off Flett. Talon going in there against Flett. They fight for it on the board. J.C. Trombley trying to come up with it. Flett has it now off the boards to Makita. Makita getting back to Ted Harris. Here's a three shot. Right on! And Jackman on that low drive had a take. Jackman got off to a rough start, but he pulled off some fine saves in the last ten minutes or so. Hallen out with Keon. Frank Mahovlich and Howe. Four of them. It's cleared in. Dennis Hall. Howe in pursuit. It goes loose to Keon. Keon trying to center it. Keon back into Frank Mahovlich. Centering pass goes to Esposito. I've covered a lot of hockey games, but the excitement gets to me every time. Esso has captured that excitement for young hockey fans with NHL power players. Last year's game played in St. Louis, the East defeated the West 4 to 1. Right here, near the end of the first period, the West leading by a score of two to one. Ecclestow number 14 hopping in there. Peter Mahovlich just ended by Clark, a pass out to Greg Polis. Now here's Ecclestow, taking a shot right on, and Dallas Smith from behind the net. Polis, along with Clark. Clark lost it to Orr. Orr out over the line with Perro and Peter Mahovlich. Orr, a pass to Perro. Carroll sending it right in front. A loose puck, a wild pile up. And what a pile up there, Bob, and they kept it out. Well, Bobby Orr breaking out with uh, Jill Perot, and Perot setting it back to him. And Bobby Orr picking it up with his foot as we see Perot coming over to the side and then just laying it back in front. And here it's off Orr's foot, and almost 
getting by Esposito in that net, but he came over with his left leg and hung it up against the post to keep the puck out. Two minutes, 50 seconds remaining. And Greg Pullis for the West, scooping it in on the left side or covering up on Pullis. Now there's a loose puck. Magnuson tipping it back in, and Eddie Westfall knocked it out. Magnuson again. The crowd has been on Magnuson. They know what a great competitor he is from the Chicago Blackhawks. And, of course, he's had a few fistic battles here at the Garden. Hollis against Peter Mahavlich. Mahavlich going down, and the play is stopped. In our first intermission, we're going to have a very interesting film on the 1969-70 uh, stars. And, of course, Babe Pratt will be along with Ward Cornell, and they'll be looking at the highlights of this first period. The highlights so far, and of course, has to be the goals. And they've had uh, three of them, two for the West and one for the East. Now the West, everybody up. Nielsen doesn't see it. Chico Mackey back to Bobby Hall. Bobby Hall shooting it. Uh, an easy shot, but it was a tricky one. Jackman kicked it out. Now Brad Park against Bobby Hall. Hall into Berenson. The West buzzing around there, and the East having their problem. Now it's Esposito clearing it to Brad Park. Here's Park. A long pass goes to Hodge. Hodge gets it back over on the far wing. Jim Nielsen scooping it in and Stapleton in there to take over for the West. Lead pass to Bobby Hall to Chico Mackey who opened the scoring in this game. The pass goes to the corner. Hodge. Playing it ahead to Brad Park. Now Park being watched by Berenson. Hodge again clearing it to Busick. Busick a lead pass intercepted by White. White. Handing it off to Stapleton. Sabaran comes on the ice. Bobby Hall tipped it for Berenson back to Hall. Hall taking the shot. A weak one wide. Now it comes to the side of the net and Jackman covers up with Sabaran in there. We mentioned this is the 24th edition of the NHL All-Star Game. Prior to the inception of the game in 1947, they had three benefit games. 1934, the H. Bailey benefit of Maple Leaf Garden, the High Marines Memorial Game in Montreal in 1937, and then in 1939, a Memorial All-Star Game in tribute to Dave Siebert. And that was also held at the Montreal Forum. One minute left in the third period, the last leading the East 2-1. to one. Brad Park trying to clear it ahead. Hodge has it. Over for Busey. Busey going to the line. He's over the line. A pass to Hodge. Hodge leaving it there. Brad Park working his way in. And Sabaran cleared at the center. Here's Danny Grant coming down over the line. Grant has a good shot, but this one couldn't find the target behind Jackman. Pitt Martin at center. There's Grant again going to the wing. Still has it. And the long shot into Jackman. 25 seconds left in the period. Hodge up on the left wing to Busick. Busick is across the line. And the West back checking very well. Here's Pitt Martin coming down with Danny Grant. A shot by Martin. It goes off Nielsen into the corner. J.C. Tremblay. He plays it to the far side. Esposito with four seconds remaining to Hodge over to Dave Below. Two seconds and the period is over. With the West beating the 2 to 1. From the Boston Garden. The National Hockey League All-Star Game. Well, a good period of all-star action. Usually it takes more than a period for the teams to get used to each other. Tonight it seems to be happening earlier. Chico Mackey, Bobby Hall scoring for the West, Cornwallier for the East, it's 2-1 for the West. Well, coming up in our first intermission, Babe Pratt will have the highlights of the first period. Jack Dennett will be long with a few all-star statistics. And we have a film that takes a look at the rosters of the 1970 all-star team. And in the second intermission, Brian McFarlane will join us as he chats with Phil and Tony Esposito. But right now, let's take a look at the NHL All-Star team. team. Tonight reflects the way things have gone in the standings to date with the Boston Bruins and the New York Rangers dominating the scene. In goal, Ed Jockerman of the Rangers making his fifth straight All-Star game appearance. Jockerman has relinquished his Ironman role this season, but in the first half of the current campaign, 
his total of four shutouts was the top individual mark amongst NHL goaltenders. An all-star game appearance by Boston's remarkable Bobby Orr is something hockey fans can look forward to as a regular happening for many years to come. This is his fourth straight all-star game appearance, and strange to tell, going into tonight's game, the scoring mark for Bobby, the current NHL scoring champ, stood at one assist in the four games played. Or has been an end-of-the-season first-team all-star the past three years, and last year was a unanimous choice. Brad Park of the New York Rangers, like Bobby Orr, is only 22 years old, and as was the case on last year's official first all-star team, Park is a starter tonight. In only his third season of Major League Hockey, Park is already established as one of the top defensemen in the NHL. A solid defensive performer from the time he broke in with New York, Park is developing into a top flight playmaker from the point position as well. The starting centerman for the East is Boston's Phil Esposito, the dominant individual performer during the first half of the current National Hockey League season. The holder of the league's all-time point mark of 126 set two years ago, Esposito has been collecting points at a rate which, if he keeps it up, will see him easily surpass that mark this year. He's appearing in his third straight All-Star game as a starter for the East. Johnny Busick, the veteran left winger of the Bruins, is making his seventh All-Star game appearance. His first came in 1955 as a member of the Stanley Cup champion Detroit Red Wings. Busick enjoyed his finest season in hockey last year when he reached a career high of 31 goals. A few weeks ago, Busick played an NHL game 1,000 and was rewarded by the Bruins with a $1,000 bill to mark the occasion. The Bruins' Ken Hodge completes the starting lineup for the East as he lines up beside Esposito and Busick on the right side. Tonight marks the first time Hodge has been involved in the midseason classic. Two seasons ago, he scored 45 times, fell off to a total of 25 last year, but this season, he appears on his way to another plus 40 total. And Harry Sinden, who left hockey after coaching the Bruins to their Stanley Cup victory last spring, is returning to coach the East. His appearance will bring back memories for fans everywhere, and especially those in the Boston Garden. The division-leading Chicago Blackhawks dominate the starting selections for the West All-Star team, placing five men on the squad, beginning with goaltender Tony Esposito. The sensation last season in his rookie year, Esposito, along with Jerry Desjardins, is involved again in a battle for the Vezina Trophy. Among the many highlights of his great first year was an All-Star game appearance. On that occasion, he was teamed with his brother Phil. Tonight, Tony faces Phil as he lines up with the West Division Club. Chicago's Keith Magnuson, one of the most talked about young players in the game today, is on defense for the West All-Stars. Magnuson successfully made the big jump from college hockey straight to the NHL. The Hard Rock Redhead from Saskatoon is playing even better his sophomore season. Last year, Pat Stapleton of the Hawks was on his way to his greatest season ever when a knee injury took him out of the lineup just past the halfway mark. But the determined little rear guard bounced back this year and his play to date earned him a starting berth tonight with the West. Stapleton is regarded as one of the finest playmaking defensemen in hockey. The Chicago image continues at center ice where Stan Makita holds forth for the West. Although his scoring figures to date have not been up to past Makita standards, Stan's overall play throughout the current season has been a major factor in the Hawks' healthy first place lead in the West. This is Makita's sixth All-Star game. After last year's All-Star game, Scotty Bowman said next year will be different. Bobby Hull will be on our side. Bowman's remarks reflected the fact that the great Chicago left winger is always an All-Star. He has appeared in 10 of the past 11 All-Star games. This year, Scotty Bowman is thankful Bobby Hull's on his side. It's unfortunate that Pittsburgh's Ken Schenkel, the only player to break the Blackhawks' West team monopoly, is on the injury list and is unable to appear tonight in the starting lineup. Schenkel suffered a broken collarbone three weeks ago, putting a halt to his fine season, which saw him leading the Pittsburgh team in scoring. Scotty Bowman is coaching the West tonight, making his first appearance behind the bench since he handled the St. Louis Blues in the Boston Garden in last year's Stanley Cup Finals. Bowman is now general manager of the Blues. The starting lineups performing tonight in hockey's glittering all-star game at the Boston Garden. 
Well, sir, you know there could be only one major drawback to having a club like that playing for you. That would come with the second and the last Fridays of each month when it came time to make out that payroll. Boy, what a costly aggregation. Well, as this 24th All-Star game is being played in Boston tonight, I can look back on a number of very memorable events from past games. In fact, I was on hand for the first All-Star game in Toronto back in 1947, which started the earlier system of having the All-Stars play the Stanley Cup champions. And, of course, it stayed that way for many years. Now, some points of interest from those earlier games are that the only serious injury, at least the only one that I can recall, in an All-Star game came in the late 40s. It might have been that first game when Billy Mosienko of Chicago broke his leg. There's never been a misconduct penalty in an All-Star game. Did you know that? And that points to either the compassion of the referees or the benevolent spirit of the whole occasion. The last major penalty in an All-Star game, 1953, and those two unusual combatants, Red Kelly and Bird Olmsted, got into a fight. We'll give you a further rundown on the All-Star events as we come along to our next intermission. Now this Saturday, January 23rd, Hockey Night in Canada returns to the viewers on the National Network as we bring you the game from the Forum in Montreal where the Canadians will be hosting the Detroit Red Wings. And I think it's interesting to note that this will be the first time these two teams have met since that trade was made that sent Frank Mahovlich to Montreal in return for Redmond, Collins, and Sharon. So consult your local television listings for the time and the station in your area. Hockey Night in Canada continues in just a moment. Quiet now, isn't it? But twice a week, the crowd, the anthem, the drop of the puck, and the fastest, toughest game in the world begins again. Player against player, the body checks. Yes, and even the penalties. Esso has captured that excitement with a great new idea for young hockey fans. NHL power players. Action stamps in full color of the players on all 14 NHL teams. 252 in all. For a limited time only, there's a free wallet for traders. And you can buy this power player saver that holds every player stamp you collect. Or this deluxe super saver that's also the best picture history of the game I've seen. Just look at these color action shots. How do you get all this? Buy your gasoline from the participating SO dealer displaying NHL Power Player signs. NHL Power Players. Save them. Trade them with SO Performance Gasolines. Our analyst tonight from our Vancouver telecast crew, Babe Pratt. Babe, uh, what have you chosen for us for the first one? The Bobby Hull goal. This uh, was a, fi a very fine uh, play by Cowboy Flett uh, and the defense of the West. When Cowboy Flett picks up the puck in back, you'll see him here, and there he goes. He lets go a booming shot. The rebound comes out to Bobby Hull, and you see that 120 mile an hour slap mm -hmm. shot. There's just no way that a goaltender can move. If he doesn't get out and block the angle, there's no way that he can move to stop a shot like that. Here, now, it comes, again, here it comes again, and you'll see Bobby let this shot go. Now, this is, he's giving it his all. And Jockerman, there's no way. It was right inside the post. Just a beautiful goal. This is Bobby Hull at his best. And that is very best. Right. Now this next highlight is what? The next highlight is the two, number one and number two choice amateur drafts. And they make fine plays. Dale Talon of Vancouver, he makes a beautiful feed lead pass to Perot. Perot makes a lovely pass to uh, to uh, Westfall. Mm -hmm. Westfall makes a beautiful play, picks up the rebound, Perot picks up the rebound. Here it is, there's Westfall, and the Vesna Trophy winner. Now look at this lovely double pass play. Right Puck goes point. back to Dale Talon, he makes another blast. Mm -hmm. Now in the slow motion, you'll catch Dale Talon making that lead pass to Perot. Now we miss it here, there it is in yeah, the corner. Yeah, there's the double pass. Mm -hmm. Now you see that puck comes out, and then it gets out to Dale Talon, where he makes a a blast. You know, it's just marvelous to see two rookies, uh, you know, in an all-star game. In an all-star game, their first year, you know, there's so many fellows that would go to Boston just to sweep the ice. Uh, <laughs> that's right, and there they are, the first year. Sure. Thank you very much, uh, Dave. And so, Boston Gardens, the score at the end of the period, the west two, the east one. Back at the Boston Garden, the officials are on the ice. We await the arrival of the All-Star teams, and then we'll have the second period. The score, two to one for the West. Kiko Mackey of the West, from the ranks of Chicago, open the scoring after 36 seconds. By the way, the record for the quickest goal after the 
started playing all-star competition was fashioned by Tampa and of Detroit back in 1950, when Detroit defeated the All-Star 7-1, to one. The Lindsay scored after 19 seconds. Bob Bolden, did you play in that game? Well, I believe that uh, that was the year we beat the All-Stars 7-1. Uh, and I think if I, if my memory proves correct that Sid Smith scored in the uh, last minute or so of that game. That was the time Smith, he said, uh, we were just starting to roll and now they end the game. Well, Smith, had a pretty good sense of humor to say things like that. Well, that's the first goal here tonight. And then the second goal, the West taking his good and lead, Bobby Hall getting the goal. That is his fourth in all-star competition. By the way, Mackey, that was his first. Flat scored a point. Registered a point, getting the assist of Bobby Hall at 438. That was a power play goal. Here come the East. And then Cornwallier getting his first all-star goal from Dallas Smith and Dave Ballone at 619. Shots on goal in the first period, each team at 13. Bobby Orr led the East with three, and Danny Grant led the West. He also had three. In penalty, Frank Mahaffey went off for the East, and it was Harris and Bobby Hall going off for the West. You know, Bob, the last time they had a major penalty in an all-star game was back in 1953, and you know, of all people to be involved in a major penalty, Red Kelly was there, and uh, Olmstead was the uh, other participant. Well, one thing about Red, who is very slow to lose his temper, but uh, I've seen him go a few times, and uh, I don't think there was any better in the National Hockey League uh, at looking after himself than the same redhead. He could move. Of course, he's quite a dancer, too, isn't he? That's right. There's a good look at a tremendous goalkeeper, Tony Esposito in the nets for the West, and uh, he came up with two or three big saves, especially one off Bobby Hall, who was set up by, uh, or Bobby Orr, rather, who was set up by Joe Bear Perot late in that uh, first period that might have tied the score. I thought Perot made some fine moves out there in that first period. He made a tremendous move in that penalty that Bobby Hall took. So we are ready, then, for the second period. Esposito at center, Busick and Hodge on the wing for the East, Nikita centering for the West, Dennis Hall, and Flett, the wingman. Ted Harris and Roberts on defense for the West, and Adore and Dallas Smith for the East. Dallas Smith starts out to center, and the East goes to the attack. Into the corner, Dennis Hall clearing it away from Hodge, Busey trying to center it, and Flett gets it up for Dennis Hall on the left side. Makita is trailing back to Makita. Makita pass for Flett, and it was too high. Hodge ahead to Busey, Esposito rolling it ahead. Roberts knocking it back to center. Here's Orr waiting for Esposito to get onside. Bobby Orr over it goes to Hodge who cleared it into Esposito. Orr into the corner. Busey jammed out of the play by Ted Harris. Busey gets it back and Flett knocked it across the weight rink to the far side. Now there's a change for the West. Clark is coming out with Ecclestone. Orr's pass stopped by Ted Harris. Harris drilling it back in. Orr is being watched by Clark. Orr ahead for Busick. Busick feeds it to the far side. And the West checking very closely with that forward line, staying up there on top of the east. Dallas Smith couldn't get anywhere. Here's a lead pass. Busick. It goes into the corner. Cournoyer getting it back. And there's going to be a penalty here. This game is coming to you from the Boston Garden. One minute and 22 seconds into the second period, Busick of the East is off for interference. So the West will have the power play on. Scotty Bowman is talking to Makita at the bench. We have Makita. Ted Martin, Danny Grant, Bobby Hall, and Red Berenson. Keon, Westfall, Nielsen, and Brad Park for the East. Berenson, his pass hit Keon. Now Makita takes over. Makita 
dropping it back. Grant a pass to Berenson out on the line. It comes ahead to Pitt Martin. He couldn't get by Brad Park. And Keon cleared it out over the line. Bobby Hull has it on the boards. And finally, they blow the whistle for the faceoff outside the East Blue Line. Stan Makita is in a little bit of an unusual position on this power play as uh, Scotty Bowman has him playing right wing and it's been a long time since I can recall Makita playing right side. Bobby Hall slides the pass over to Barron's and ahead to Makita. Makita over for Danny Grant. It's off Grant. There's Brad Park going after it. He clears it out over the line. Barron's and tipped it in and another offside at the East Blue Line. One minute and 25 seconds remaining in the final lead of Busick. You've just joined us. It's two to one for the West here in the second period. After exactly two minutes of play, here's Berenson coming in. That goes finally to Keon. He scoops it off the board. Cruising back there, Bobby Hall. Hall got a tremendous ovation when he was introduced. Berenson ahead for Danny Grant. Back it goes to Berenson. He's over the line to Makita. Makita shooting it off Keon. Puck is loose. Makita trying to center it. Here's Berenson. He just missed it. West ball. Propelled it into the center ice area. That looked like a fine scoring opportunity for the West, but Makita failed to get it. And then West ball took over. Hull up to Danny Grant. Grant a pass to Makita. Hit Martin on the right side. He hooked it in there with his leg, and it's called on the offside. Forty seconds left in the penalty to Busick. And we have a change for both teams. Clark is at center. Greg Polis on the left wing. Ecclestone on the right side for the West. Rattel and Dave Ballone playing up. Ballone inadvertently put it on the stick of Polis. He's into the corner against Trombley. Now it's loose to the far side. Rattel starting out. Dave Ballone up on the left side. He has it going in against Magnuson. Ballone played it back in there. Rattel has it. Rattel laying it back down the ice, killing off some valuable seconds. Trombley has it. 15 seconds left in the penalty. Ballone down in over the line. Ballone still has it. Getting set for a pass. It's back to the point and into the center ice area. The West has not been able to get any real good shots on Jackman with this advantage. Here's Rattel, stopped by Magnuson, and the penalty has expired. There's a pass over to Polis, over the line, and he brought it in offside. J.C. Trombley of the Montreal Canadiens. He is one of four from Montreal playing in this game, the two Mahavaliches and Cornwallers. So it's Rattel, Cornwallier, and Ballone now. With the East going with a full complement up front. There's Dave Ballone picking it up. Cornwallier streaking down there. Ballone going after it. Flager played it on the board. Out to center, Pullis. Going to the line. The shot off Trombley. That's Clark dashing in there trying to get it. Dave Ballone covering up. Ballone, a pass to Trombley. Trombley ahead for Rattel. Rattel down at the line. Knocked off his stick. And a delayed whistle there on the offside. Rattel does not like that call by John D'Amico. Three minutes, 59 seconds have been played. Second period, the West in front, two to one. Barkley Plager coming down to the line. He's across the line, gives it to Ecclestone, back for Plager. They are teammates, of course, with St. Louis. It's behind the net. Now it comes to the side. Jackman alertly clearing it away. Ecclestone against Trombley. Trombley jammed in on the boards and Dale Callan taking over. Callan, a long pass for Cornwallier. Back to Rattel. Rattel getting set. There's the shot. In it goes to Esposito. Last night they had the annual All-Star Dinner 
1,500 people pay $25 each to sit in on the dinner, partake of the food, and meet the hockey players. And the fun, the Jimmy fun, there's Dallas Smith with a shot. Esposito handing it off to White. Now Howe trying to get it loose behind. Howe has it. Now it goes to Perrault, bouncing around there, and Esposito not taking any chances. Jordy Howe on that right side, um, you know, must be a real thrill for that young Gilbert Perot which will play between Mahavlich and Howe on that line. It must be a thrill for Bobby Orr to be out there because uh, Howe played his first All-Star game the year Bobby Orr was born. And there's Howe giving it off to Orr. Orr, that spinorama move. Here's Orr coming down. Eating it in there and offside. You notice there, Bob, that the West had four players right across that blue line. I guess that's one way to defend against Orr. Well, if, if they've come up with a new way to defend on him, they certainly haven't spread it around the league because everybody else is having a lot of trouble with him. Keon is coming out to take over at center from Gilbert Perrault, who gets a hand as he goes to the east bench. Dennis Hull chasing a puck to the far wing. Stapleton handing it off to White. Pass goes to center, broken up by Dallas Smith. White ahead for Stapleton to Makita. Makita with Dennis Hull, a pass for Hull. Hull passes it back, Hull takes over. Hull on the board, trying to get some skating room. Now he clears it to Dave Keon, ahead for Dallas Smith. Frank Mahavlich on the far side. Dallas Smith, his pass hit White. Flett goes in there to take over. Here's Howe centering it. Now out comes at center, Makita. Dennis Hall on the other side. Makita over to Dennis Hall, going in. And he couldn't control it, rolling as you saw there into Jackman. Here's Stapleton winding up for a shot, and Dallas Smith has it. Smith with Bobby Orr. Pass for Orr. Or going down on that right side, and Stapleton knocked it away. Alden Makita on the right side to Flett. Flett is across the line, takes a shot into the far side, or against Dennis Hull. Just over seven minutes have gone by in the period. Dallas Smith to Keon. Keon back on the left side. The Hobley couldn't get him. Now it's Berenson ahead to Dennis Hull. There's the shot. Off the glass, that booming drive. It's centered. Back it comes to Dennis Hull again. He tried to set up his man, Sabaran. Frank Mahavli ahead to Keon with Gordy Howe over on the wing. Howe couldn't get it. Stapleton hit Berenson with it. Or ahead to Howe. Over the line. Howe still with it. Whipped it in there. The rebound just cleared away from Orr by White. Right in front of Mahavli. A shot, and that's the people got a piece of it. Here's Kenny Hodge going in. He shoots, oh, what a save there. Now it's back, out on the line. And Kenny Hodge, who can really rip that puck, let go one of his best, and Esposito got in front of it. Now Jim Nielsen, ahead of goes to Esposito, back to Nielsen, at center. Lee clearing it in. In there goes Ted Harris. He sets up Bobby Hall. Bobby Hall coming down with Berenson. Passed up there by Busey. Busey coming down with Esposito. Busey over the line to Esposito going in. And he failed to catch up with it. Now Berenson. A pass out over the line. Bobby Hall. His pass intended for Saberin broken up. That's Busey for the East. Coming down. Hitting the line. Busey trying to work his way in there. Back it goes to Hodge. Hodge shoots it off Bobby Hall. And there's the souvenir. Attention favor Robert Luongo of Memphis. And Phil Esposito is set in there on, uh, partially in the clear on a pass from Johnny Busick. Couldn't quite deflect it past uh, Brother Tony in that net, but that Tony Esposito has certainly been something in the early part of this period. 12 minutes, five seconds left. Brad Park, a weak shot. Doug Roberts, he misses Sabra with a pass down the ice. Jackman handing it off to Brad Park. Bobby Hall shooting it. Now Busey in possession for the East. There it goes to Esposito getting away from Bobby Hall out over the line. Esposito coming down. Berenson hands it off to Bobby Hall. Here's Hall at the line dropping it to Ted Harris. 
Harris ahead for Sabaran. Jim Nielsen picking his way out for the East. Here's Esposito coming down with Busey to pass to Busey for the goal. Oh, a tremendous, another shot by Esposito. And this Tony Esposito is tremendous. Here's Berenson coming in, fakes the shot over to Bobby Holt. He shoots and Jackman pulls off the save. Great action here in this second period. The goalies absolutely scintillating. First Esposito and then Jackman. You seek over to Esposito down with Hodge. Bill Esposito clearing it in. Off the boards it goes. Doug Roberts has it. Now Ecclestone cleared it out. Kit Martin coming down on the line. J.C. Tromley knocked it back out. Here's Pitt Martin again. And he shoots it in for the West. The West leading two to one. And they are now making a wholesale change. Westfall ahead to Perrault. Perrault down on the line. Streaking into the corner. Centering it right in front. And Ecclestone clearing it ahead for Pitt Martin. Martin out on the line to Danny Grant. Danny Grant going in for the shot. The rebound. And J.C. Tremblay off to the wing to Westfall. Carroll coming down over the line with Peter Mahovlich. Off Mahovlich's stick. Here's Mahovlich turning, centering it. Magnuson and Mahovlich go to the ice. Danny Grant. Long shot. Into the corner, it's J.C. Trombley picking it up. Trombley losing it there to Ecclestone, and Jackman knocked it away from Ecclestone, who was going to set up Danny Grant. Goalies very alert in this period. J.C. Trombley ahead to Perro. He dashes in over the west line. He gets by Danny Grant. Oh, look at the move. He's going right in front. And he had it knocked off his stick. And Perro pulling off just beautiful move. And the crowd deeply appreciative of what they're seeing. Here's Westfall. Last goes behind Peril. Dennis Hall handing it off to Magnuson. At center, Makita across the line. Makita to Dennis Hall. Right in front it goes. And Jackerman covers up. And after these two goalies, Tony Esposito and Jackerman thrill this huge crowd with their great saves in this period. They got a hand, they went to the benches. And to the West bench, it was Tony Esposito, Wakeley in goal now for the West. Jackman over there on the east side, in his place now is Bill Muir. Division team, number 30, on Saturday Eagles, next, Bill Hockey Moore. Night in Canada will bring you on the entire the CBC West television West network, West the West Detroit West and Montreal West game. West and this telecast will be brought to you in part by Ford of Canada and their Ford and Mercury dealers. And Bob Goldham, you can appreciate the work of a goalie and the work also of a forward. We'll talk about the goalies and then talk about Gilbert Perrault. Go ahead. Dan, I don't know how anyone can improve on the goaltending we've seen in this first half of this game. I, I thought Eddie Jackman might have looked a little shaky at the start of the uh, the game especially on that first shot of uh, Chico's Mackey's and then later on on Bobby Hull's goal but he certainly has more than made up for it uh, especially at the end of that first period when there was tremendous pressure and again in this period Tony Esposito has been I thought tremendous all the way through he made a, a great save on Johnny Busick who was set in alone from 30 35 feet out beautiful save on him he picked up a rebound off Frank Mahovlich and then beat uh, Gilbert Perot coming in from the short side and you talk about that youngster from the Sabres he made a move and I haven't seen moves like that in a long long time uh, he came out from the corner he beat three people on the move and uh, it's just that he didn't have enough room to make that final move on Tony Esposito but uh, sparkling move and uh, I mentioned that he probably thrilled to be playing between uh, Gordy Howe and Frank Mahalich on that uh, one particular shift but I would imagine that you talk to uh, big number nine and uh, that number 27, and they'll tell you that this is a boy with a tremendous future in the National Hockey League, Gilbert Perrault. And the goalies have been given their work with a free activity warm up. They'll take over now. Wakely down to our left for the West. And Vilmuir, and there's quite a story how he has performed this year with a New York Rangers. His average at the present time is 1.79. And uh, he has three shutouts. 
saw a ranger, a replacing a ranger, and Wakeley replacing Esposito of Chicago. Two to one, the West leading. Play on again, and Orr has it. Rattel, Cornwallier, and Dave Ballone for the East. Here's Dennis Hall checking on Rattel. Cornwallier, ambidextrous again. He's been doing that quite often. And he shoots from the left and the right. Now White clearing it up on the wing. Down there goes Makita. Makita trying to center it. Knocked to the ice by Dallas Smith. There's a centering pass from Flett. Dallas Smith taking over for the East. Being watched by Makita. Bobby Orr couldn't hold it. Ran back in there by Dennis Hall. And the West strategy. They're trying to break up the East before they can get it organized. They're moving up. Now Rattel. Coming down to the line. Picks it up again. Raquel getting set for the shot. And that one went off flat. White. The Dennis Hall ahead to Makita coming down with flat. Makita winds up for the long drive. Off Vilmur, but offside. Eight minutes and 18 seconds remaining in the second period. A two to one. The West in front and all the scoring coming in the first period. Mackey and a hull for the West, Cornwallier for the East. Roberts clearing it back to Ted Harris. Up on the wing it goes. Hull has lost it. Now then, how? Hands it off to Nielsen. Keon and Frank Mahovlich, the other forward for the East. There's an offside. Look at number 14, Davey Keon of the Toronto Maple Leafs. What a year he's having, uh, Keon. They say you have to be strong down the middle, and Keon and Ullman doing a terrific job for Toronto. Now Frank Mahovlich clearing it ahead to Keon. Keon rolling it in. Into the corner, number 22, Polis. Ted Harris took Howe out of the play. Now it's ahead to Clark. Clark, a right wing pass. Ecclestone fails to catch up with it. Nielsen feeding it back into the center ice area. Now Howe turning at his own line to Brad Park. Park. Now he's getting skating room. Making that deep. Gets it to Gordy Howe. Howe handing it off to Nielsen. Nielsen shooting it in. Keon racing in and Ted Harris there too. Wakely clearing it. Now on the right side. Ecclestone, a long left wing pass. Paul is going after it. Brad Park after him. Paul has beat Park to it. Now it's back on the wing. Ted Harris jams it back in there. Vilmuir clearing it. Clark back to Ted Harris. Harris shooting it in. It's right on. Vilmuir doing some skating himself, getting it to Gordy Howe. Howe to Keon. Keon a pass to Mahavlich Frank. Frank over the line. The shot. Off the glass it goes. Hollis trying to clear it against Gordy Howe. Howe after it. Centered it. Now Jim Nielsen off the board. Slipping it in there and then lost it. Ecclestone rolling it down on the right side. Brad Park taking over. Got away from Polis. Clearing it ahead to Keon. His pass stopped by Ecclestone. Now Brad Park again coming in on that right side. Making some great moves. Brad Park finally lost it to Berenson. Berenson on the right side. Ecclestone lining up for the shot. There's J.C. Trumbley coming out. Almost lost it to Berenson. Gets the pass to Esposito. Esposito ahead it goes. Dale Talon the shot. And Wakely just jammed that one in between his pads. Fine move by Wakely on that play from Dale Talon. A tremendous shot. Now let's look at that again, Dan, as uh, Dale Talon picked that up just Outside the blue line, crossed over and with a hard slap shot. And Wakely closing his pads on. Now the East, everybody up. Busick trying to get it. Into the corner, Magnuson for the West. Busick stopping it, giving it to Talon. And it goes to Busick, closing in a shot. And it goes off a stick. Now Bobby Hall down with Berenson and Severin. Bobby Hall trying to center it. Blocked by J.C. Trombley on a fine defensive play. Hodge into the corner to Busey. Busey takes a look, gets it over to the side. 
Bobby Hull really couldn't get possession. J.C. Trombley. Now it's high in the air. Trombley finally comes up with it. Trombley ahead for Hodge. It misses him by a couple of feet, and back there goes Barkley Plager. Five minutes and five seconds left in the second period. The West leading the East two to one. Now Berenson out over the line with Sabrin and Hull. Hull has it back to Sabrin. He tried to feed it back. J.C. Trombley clearing at the center. Magnuson to Hull. Here's Busey going after a loose pass. Pass intercepted by Barkley Plager. Plager coming in with Pitt Martin. Plager getting in there. Close a shot. And that one off Dale Talon or Pitt Martin. Now Hodge to J.C. Trombley. Trombley to Hodge with Esposito and Busey. The pass gets flat. Now Esposito clearing it into the corner. And Flett moves in there to pick it up. Change of players all around for the East. Or on defense now with Dallas Smith. Flett over the line. Knocked off two stick. Eddie Westfall ahead. Esposito couldn't get it. Barkley Plager taking over. Plager ahead to Flett. Danny Grant reaching up on the left side, trying to bring it in there. It gets caught up in his paraphernalia. He was being checked by Peril. Now Peter Mahavli. He misses on the pass to Westfall. Stapleton at his own line. Bill White got away from Peril. Ahead too far for Pitt Martin. Vilmure clearing it out. Now White in the long shot. And the great action we had there for four or five minutes in the second period seemed to taper off when the goalies were changed. Now it's Bobby Orr coming down with Perro. Perro over the line, back to Orr. Orr still has it. And finally, Westfall goes in. Now it's Pitt Martin being watched there by Gilbert Perro. Up on the wing it goes to Danny Grant. Grant a pass, intercepted by Peter Mahavli. And he feeds it back into the West Zone. Stapleton around the board. White being watched by Peter Mahovlich. Here's Orr trapping it at center. Orr being watched by Makita. Gets it to Westfall who feeds it back in there. Orr racing in. Off the board. Back to Dallas Smith. Up loose in front. And Stapleton coming away. Ahead to Makita with Danny Grant. Makita. Back it goes to Ecclestone, and Dallas Smith cleared it. Centering pass comes off the boards to White, a shot. Loose puck in front. Orr ahead to Peter Mahavli with Harrell. Harrell down on that left side, puts on the break. There's the pass over on the other wing. Orr clearing it in, number 10 is Westfall, trying to center it. It bounces in front, and White knocked it away to the wing to Dennis Hall. Now it's kept in by Bobby Orr, a hot shot. And Wakeley grabbed it, and it doesn't take or long. From the Boston Guard, the NHL All-Star game. Lining up for the face-off to the left of Wakeley, the West leading 2-1. to one. East everybody up. Horn Y.A. trying to pick it up and dash in there. Now it's on the mesh, and the play is stopped. There are three brother combinations featured in this game, the Havelichers, the Hulls, and the Esposito. Incidentally, the parents of the Hulls and the Estrositos are here. Stapleton having his trouble against the Rattel. Ecclestone kicking it into the corner. Here's Cornoyer dashing to the far side. Playing it on the boards to Rattel. To Dave Ballone. He was checked there by White. Now the West coming up. Makita ahead to Dennis Hall. Hall makes a great move. Now Makita picks it up. Makita getting set to center it. Brad Park trying to tie him up. Ecclestone on the board. Back it goes to Stapleton. The shot, and it's wide. Here's White shooting it in there. Kicked out by Vilmure. Rattel has it for the East. Out over the line. Dave Ballone on one wing and Cornwallie on the other, and Ballone offside. Mr. and Mrs. Hull are rooting for the West, both their sons from the West. Different story with the Espositos with the son in each team. Mr. Esposito wants the East to win. While Mrs. Esposito, with typical maternal loyalty, she says she wants a tie. Everybody will be happy. Incidentally, the Espositos uh, will be interviewed by Brian McFarland in the intermission upcoming. 
So after that offside, the face-off in the center ice area with one minute and 12 seconds left in the second period. And it is two to one. The West leading. There's a lead pass for Cornwallier. Dave Ballone going in. Roberts knocked it to the corner. Ballone jams him in on the board. Now Ballone trying to get it clear. Less than a minute remaining in the period. Bobby Hall trying to set up Sabra. Sabra has it over on the side. Ted Harris picking it up into the corner. It goes. Clark getting set to center it. Clark still has it. Back to Ted Harris. Closing in for the shot. And it was blocked by Nielsen. Here's Raquel. Down with Cornwallier. Cornwallier over the line. A very weak shot. He was being checked. Bobby Hall with 28 seconds remaining. Comes to center. Hall down on the line. Working his way to the corner. Jim Nielsen rolls it back down into West Territory. Gordy Howe on the ice chasing Roberts. Now Roberts to Flett. Flett. Clearing it to center, Howe gets it. Plays it off the board. Clock running out. We now have three seconds. Ted Harris ahead to Bobby Hall. And the period is over. And the West two lead two to one. From the Boston Garden, the NHL All-Star Game. No scoring, but some great action in the period. Particularly some great moves by individual stars. And some outstanding goal keeping and we'll have the highlights for you when Babe comes along later on those saves. Right now, let's go to Brian and his Esposito guest. Well, there are many brother acts in hockey today, and we have three of them out there tonight, and of course, two of the most famous brother acts in hockey, Phil and Tony Esposito. you got quite a duo going out there tonight. Tony's finished for the night. <laughs> you you uh, let him get away before scoring on him. You came great. very close there about midway through the period, but he left the cage for a moment. Yeah, well, I took a little bit on him, but I believe it looked up well. How about that, Tony? You know, it doesn't happen in the league play. It'll happen now when there's, you know, there's... You know, there's not two points. It's Tony, that's the first goal you've given up in All-Star competition, right? Well, it's actually been only, it was only the second time I've been on the team, but uh, I, I let up. I thought it wasn't a very good goal either. I, I left the rebound out, and as a result, I checked in. The fellas uh, have quite a rivalry going. Do you kid each other? Not only tonight, I, I know it's a little looser than usual, but uh, during the regular season? No, I don't think we really uh, kid each other while the game is on. We may in the summertime. And we may after the game or something, or, or the night before the game, but it's business. Uh, his job, and it, it means it's my job, and it means his job. You know, it's the same thing. Uh, right there, we do our job. There's 18 other guys depending on Tony, just as there are 18 other fellows depending on me if I get a chance to score. I need to stop it. I, I've heard you during the summertime on your radio show in the Sioux. I don't think you were up there last year, but uh, you really have oh, yeah. fun with that, don't you? Oh, yes. Uh, we, uh, it's a good experience because uh, it, it helps your speaking, and when you go and speak in the you know, your grammar is a lot better than it would be otherwise. How about your brother here, Tony? I, I don't want to ask him this question. I'd rather ask you. He's, got, uh, he's going for Rocket Richard's record of 50 goals in 50 games. He needs uh, eight more in what? Uh, oh, one thing. not going for anybody. Okay. You're, well, Tony, let's ask you the question. Do you think he's going to make it? Well, I, I'll tell you, he's got a good chance because he's... Uh, playing uh, the best hockey I've ever seen him play, and uh, I'd say he's playing better hockey now than anybody I've ever seen play him play in English. And this type of brother like that. The whole 40, family played that. He's only 40 goals at this stage of the game. He's not exactly uh, doing a lot of the job. I think he wants more money for the hockey school. Yeah, I've got it. Uh, you face them too next week, though. Uh, we play them Saturday here, and we play them here all Sunday. It's a big weekend for us, and... Uh, we were quite happy that they beat New York on Sunday, so maybe we can to beat them now. Needless to say, Tony, you're not, if he is coming close to the record, you're not going to let in a soft one uh, or two on him. Uh, well, I, I hope not. Uh, as as I hope he never scores on me again. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way to look at it. It's nice to have Harry Sinden back behind your bench, right? Yeah, it is. He's, uh, he's, he hasn't changed. Still no, yelling up and down, facing up and down. Oh, and he perspires more than anything. Man, I've ever known in my life. Uh, 
He really, really is. Uh, his, he just fires an awful lot. And I guess he really gets up for a hockey. I think he's missing his guy. I really do. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it at all. Of course, you're missing uh, Ty McKenzie out there tonight. A very unfortunate accident. Yes. Uh, you heard about his condition? Well, he was operating on uh, uh, this afternoon, I think, and apparently everything is okay. And we're really happy because uh, he's a real, real mainstay with our hockey club. And uh, if he's watching, I hope you hurry up and get back. I we need him. <laughs> what about that little quip he had well, about uh, uh, Stanfield's baby? Well, Freddie Stanfield had a he and his wife had a baby girl. I guess about five, six days ago. And, and Tyson said something like, you know, what, what it was and all that. And Tony said, 6'3". I said, gee, how big is it? <laughs> <laughs> Tony, do you have fun in the Hawks? Who are the characters on the Blackhawks? Well, uh, one guy, Whitey Stapleton, you never know when he's serious and when he's joking. Now, we have a bunch of good guys who joke around a lot, and this is why I think we're being a little successful. The Boston fans seemed to get on Magnuson tonight, though, when he was introduced. Well, uh, it seems like, uh, you know, Magnuson is, uh, well, I think he's one of the best defensemen in hockey. I agree with you. He's that. aggressive, and uh, as his style uh, indicates, the people sort of get, when he goes on the road, they sort of boom because he's always aggressive, fighting sort of man, and uh, at home they love him. I don't doubt that, too. And you, uh, you're you both going for first place in your respective divisions. Uh, it'd be nice for you to, to meet again along the playoff trail, right? Yeah, it would well, be. It would be nice, but I, I wouldn't bet on the same results. <laughs> well, I'm not going to say it. I'll just, we'll just see what happens. Well, thank you, Tony. Thank you, Phil. It's just great to have you here. Thank you, Brandon. Nice thank you, Hockey Night in Canada continues in just a moment. Well, for just a few more minutes, I'd like to sort of expand on those events in past All-Star games, such as we were talking about in the first intermission. I think it's interesting that only one goaltender has ever received a penalty in All-Star competition. That came in 1964 when Charlie Hodge who at that time was playing for the Canadians, throws the puck, and he got called for it. Now, the record for an All-Star goal scoring goes back to 1950. Detroit 7, the All-Stars 1, and incidentally, another scoring record, Ted Lindsay's three goals in that game still holds up. I think about the only shutout came in the 1966-67 game, Montreal 3, the selects, no score. It's interesting also, there have been two empty net goals, Alec Delvecchio for the All-Stars in 1953, and Dutch rival, remember him, for Detroit in 1955. The man who holds by far the most All-Star records, of course, the same good-natured fellow who's rewritten hockey statistics over the last quarter century, and incidentally, who's playing in tonight's game, Gord Howe. This coming Saturday night is going to see the Detroit Red Wings visiting the Forum in Montreal to take on the Canadians in the first meeting of these two clubs since they made the major deal for the players. Hockey Night in Canada on Saturday night then will feature this Montreal game from one coast to the other and all areas in between. So just check the time and station in your area. Hockey Night in Canada continues in just a moment. Well, Dave, hard to pick some highlights out of that, but uh, what have you chosen for us? Well, I wanted to show our uh, grand old man of hockey. He's 42 years young and he's been in the National League for 25 years just to show his strength and sheer power on one play here where he takes uh, Bill White and the power behind the net. He, he gets the puck and just takes him right out. You'll see the play we're working up to right now. There's Gordy now. White tries to freeze the puck. He gets in there and tries to freeze it. There he is now. And, and big Gordy just lifts him right out of there. And then there's a whistle to stop the play. Gordy's been doing this for years. He's very strong. Very powerful man. Here you there's see him play. again. See, when White tries to freeze it, Gordy just reaches in and pulls him right up makes the pass over, and then tries to get, now you yeah. see him there, lift him right up, get the puck out, and Esposito has to freeze the play. <laughs> On our uh, next play here, it's hockey at its greatest. Both ends of the rink, you'll see Busick, Esposito, and the goaltending by Esposito is just great. Mm -hmm. And then you'll see them go down the ice and Red Berenson make a play to Bobby Hull, which is just fantastic that Jockin makes the play. Here's Esposito, he misses the open net, and uh, now we go right down the ice, and you'll see Red Barons to make a beautiful pass to, see that beautiful pass to Bobby Howell, and Jockerman makes the save. Mm -hmm. This is hockey at its best. When it's wide open like this, this is what the fans pay the money to see. Mm -hmm. Now here he is on Here Busey. he is again, there's Busey, makes a terrific save on Busey. Esposito stops dead, gets back in the play, tries to put in the empty net, and his brother, Gets over there just in time. Tony was real quick on that one. Now they go down the ice again. 
Great Radio. fake here by Berenson. Yeah, this the Berenson goes in, fakes a shot, just wastes a fraction of a second. You see that beautiful play? And here's Bobby Hull going in, and he tries to tuck it in backhanded, and Junkerman is uh, the master on that play. <laughs> and the last one. And the last one is Frank Mahovlich, the big M, trying to put the puck by Esposito. And I think Esposito will have serious uh, <laughs> contention for a star of this game, the way he's been going. You see the big M? I think the young Perot is playing with him and Gordie Howe. What a throw it is for that youngster. Here you see uh, Gordie Howe. He flips that puck in. Then Big Frank gets over. There he is. He has he has the whole right side to get it in, and Esposito is just great on this. Mm -hmm. Here he is again. And now we'll catch it in the slow motion. Where you see, where you see, there's Gordie. He's dumping it through into the corner. Keep, yeah, and then you'll catch you'll catch Big Frank coming in now. You see, he's right in the slot yeah. where he's supposed to be. Now he tries to get the short side, and he hits Esposito, or Esposito was equal to the cause. Actually, uh, Babe, uh, this is a good all-star game. Usually it takes them a while, doesn't it, before you start seeing beautiful plays come out of that, because they haven't been playing together. Well, I thought there could have been some fights, you know, because the tempers could run high when they're going this fast. Bobby Orr's at his best tonight, you know, in front of his home Boston fans. And I was real sorry that uh, that our captain in, on the coast. I was uh, waiting for that to be brought up. Erwin Curtinback didn't make it. He was fourth in scoring when he got hurt. And we, out on the coast, were all pulling for Orlin to be in this all-star game. And, uh, but uh, we've got Talon in there, so all our fans out in Vancouver and Western Canada are all thrilled. Yeah, you're not going to name them all, though. Uh, well, okay. we, <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks, babe. Dan, he's ready to go, so let's go to Dan. Well, the third period upcoming. All the scoring in the game so far in the first period with dramatic suddenness. After 36 seconds, Kiko Mackey an assisted to give the West a one to nothing lead. And then at 4.38, Bobby Hall from Flett. That was a power play call with Frank Mahomes in the penalty box. And then Cornoyer from Smith and Dave Ballone at 6.19. In the first period, the shots on goal were even at 13 apiece. In the second period, no scoring, just the one penalty to Busick. This is Busick's seventh All-Star game, and it's just his second penalty. The last penalty he had was back in 1955. 12 to 8, the shots on goal, as we mentioned, over two periods. The East out shooting the West, 25 to 21. And now Bob Goldham, the money is on the table, so to speak, to the winner to the winning team, each member will go $500, and to the losing team, each member gets 250 I think the interesting thing we might look for here is to see if that Western Division All-Star Club can contain the East in their own end. This has been Scotty Bowman's uh, procedure, I think, to try to keep them before they can get started, and he's been successful up to date. Let's see if he can maintain that momentum in the third period. So we're all set then for the third period. Pitt Martin at center, Grant, who had two shots in that period. He has a total of five. He leads the individual players. In the East, clearing it in. Barkley Plager being watched by Esposito. A pass to Grant. Grant ahead, and he missed Pitt Martin with it. Abior playing it to Busick. Busick cleared it across the line. Plager knocking it back into the center ice area. Is Bobby Orr with it again? Dallas Smith. Ecclestone stops it to Pitt Martin, who couldn't come up with it. Music missed Orr. And Hodge knocks it to the far side. Dallas Smith clearing at the center. And there's an offside called at the East Blue Line. Yeah, I might mention at this time that the next season All Star game will be played in Minnesota. In 1973, the game will be in New York. In the faceoff, Magnuson sliding it over to Barkley Flager ahead for Pitt Martin. He ran into Dallas Smith and Hodge starting out for the East to Esposito. Esposito going to the line. Flager stopped him. And the West checking very closely. Offside. And you know, time to remind you 
and of the game is coming to you from the Boston Garden, the NHL All-Star Game. A long shot by Saturn. Bobby Hall on the rebound, and he ripped that one just wide. Here's Bill White shooting it in there. In front, Nielsen cleared it out over the line to Ballone. Nigel missed the pass back. Bobby Hall circling, being watched by Cornwallier. Here's Berenson starting out for the west. A long left wing pass, and Hall was well in there on the offside. This game is coming to you from the Boston Garden. Bill White dashing into the corner to pick it up, and again, Cornwallier forward checking Stapleton with Cornwallier after him. Two to on the West leading. And we are in this third period. Back it goes to Jim Nielsen. There's the shot off Stapleton's stick. Bobby Hull couldn't come up with it. Cornwallier, a pass that's deflected out by Saberin. He's racing after it, cutting in on that right side, and the low drive just wide. Stapleton clearing it back into the corner for Bobby Hull. A centering pass. Berenson trying to get it. Cornwallier out over the line with Rattel. Rattel across the line. Here's Rattel passing it over to Brad Park. The shot. And he's wide with it. Stapleton from the corner ahead to Bobby Hall. Hall to Berenson. Sabran's on the wing. Berenson shooting it. And a bullet like drive wide. White takes a shot and it's deflected over the top of the net. Bobby Hall shooting it. Bill Muir coming out to cover up on the short side. Brad Park losing it there to Sabaran. Sabaran clearing it up to Stapleton. He missed it. Here's Rattel failing to catch up with it. And interference call here. From the Boston Garden, the NHL All-Star Game. Finally, the referee caught up with Stapleton, who couldn't be convinced that he should go off for interference, but Stapleton is in the penalty box. On Saturday next, Hockey Night in Canada will bring you on the entire CBC TV network the Detroit-Montreal game at Montreal, and there will be on film a special tribute to Gordie Howe that Saturday night. So the East, they need a goal to tie it up. The West leading two to one. And the East getting a break here. They have the advantage. Mahavli, Jess Posita, Gordy Howe, J.C. Trombley, and Orr. Now Magnuson taking over at his own line. He's on defense with Ted Harris. Crack up front with Ecclestone. Magnuson clearing it down the ice. Bobby Orr back there to get this East power play organized. Or to Esposito, back to Orr. Out over the line. Orr coming to center. There's the pass to J.C. Trombley. He's over the line. Ted Harris takes over. And he sends the puck back down the ice. One minute and 22 seconds left in the penalty to Stapleton. Orr with crack after him. Here's Orr. Orr going to the line. Still has it. He's upended. Slides in there. Clears it behind the net. Frank Mahavlic missed it. Gordy Howe getting set. Back it comes to Trombley. Over to Bobby Orr getting set for the shot. And stopped by Wakeley on the short side. Gordy Howe gets it. Howe trying to work it in front. And Magnuson takes over for the West. Magnuson. Gordy Howe in pursuit. Magnuson playing it on the board. Trombley going after Ted Harris. Now Orr failed to keep it in. Esposito. Back at his own line with 37 seconds left in the penalty. J.C. Trombley lost it. Orr has it. Orr getting set for a pass to Esposito. Esposito around the net. What is he going to do with it? Still has it. Esposito back to Trombley. Trombley getting set for shot. And he hit the side of the net with it. Clark. And he backhands it down the ice. A dozen seconds left. In the penalty, Bobby Hall comes on the ice. Here's Orr, leading the attack again. It goes over the line of Gordy Howe. He kicks it toward the corner. White shooting it. Out over the line it comes. 
Now Bobby Hall racing after it. And Orr playing it back up on that wing. So the penalty has expired. And the West held well again against the vaunted power of the East. Orr passing it to J.C. Trombley out to Howe. Nikita knocking it away. Now Orr again at center as Esposito with him clearing it in. And that's Bill White from the Chicago Blackhawks for the West to another Hawk, Bobby Hull. Westfall clearing it back. Dale Talon hit Flett with it. Flett going in with Bobby Hull. Flett turning. There it goes in front, and Pitt Martin couldn't hold it. At center, Peter Mahobley's lost it. Dallas Smith picks it up to Westfall. Out over the line it comes in for the offside. Number five, Dale Talon, the rookie defenseman from the Vancouver Canucks, who, uh, along with Gilbert Perot, uh, gives the West, that Eastern Division, some pretty good representation in rookies. Now Stapleton from his own line. To the right side, Pitt Martin behind the net. Vilmure clearing it. Now Talon. Harrell who dazzled them in the second period. Got it back to Talon. It goes to Perro, starting up fast on the right side. Cleared it to the line. Off the board to go. Sabarin going in on the right side on the shot to Vilmure. Dallas Smith. He hit Danny Grant with it. Grant and Dallas Smith appear at 20 fight for it. Harrell ahead to Westfall. And the West. Checking very well. Here's Pitt Martin going in. On the backhand, a shot. On the short side, Vilmure had no trouble with it. And Vilmure, a great hockey story this year, coming into the league a little late. But there was another fellow who came in fairly late, Bob. Johnny Bauer, and he did very well. Peter Mahavli turning in the center ice area, ahead for Westfall. A Hovlage bringing it back in. Stapleton down on the left side. Picking it up on the wing. Sabaran. He couldn't get anywhere against Westfall. Now it's Stapleton working over the line. In it goes off the board for Makita. And it's behind the match. Hell there for a faceoff. At the end of the game, Foster Ewitt will be along with his three-star selection. So stay with us, and Foster, with his wealth of hockey experience, will be able to come up with the three stars. It's got to be a tough job when you have all stars out there, but no doubt he'll have a fine selection. Here's Keon, down with Hodge. Keon shooting it, and getting in front of it was Swigger. Now Makita rolling it down on the left side. Brad Park with Dennis Hall after him. Hall took him in on the board. Park recovering, starting out, losing it. And they're having trouble getting control of it. Now here's Eccleston, a pass to the far side. Keon turning for the East. 12 minutes and 13 seconds left in the hockey game. Johnny Busey has it off his stick. Barkley Plager lost it. Now it goes to Hodge, two pass for Busek and a fine defensive play by Magnuson. Nikita cruising to center, is taking his time. Hodge trying to get possession. Brad Park over the line. Park shooting it in and he hit Ecclestone. Magnuson ahead to center to Makita. Dennis Hall coming to the wing. Makita still with it. Knocked off his stick. Hodge with Keon. Busek is on the far side over to Busey, cutting in. And again, Magnuson. Walk it up. And there's going to be a penalty here. It's centered. Dennis Hall came up with it. Magnuson looking at the referee from the Boston Garden, the NHL All-Star game. Magnuson in the penalty box for tripping on Busek. And so the East again have the advantage and they have Ballone, Rattel, Cornwallier, Bobby Orr, and Esposito. Berenson 
And Clark up front. Cornoyer getting it back to Bobby Orr. There it goes to Esposito. He flipped it in there. It's deflected behind by Ballone. Berenson on the left side. Coming out, checked by Rattel. Now it's Rattel back with Dave Ballone, who has it. Ballone over the line. Feeding it in there. Ted Harris shooting it back into the center ice area. Ballone intercepted. Here's Clark. Takes the shot. Vilmure handing it off to Orr. Clark getting it again. Clark behind the net. Still has it. And that'll kill off some valuable seconds, getting it back to White in the West Zone. Out it comes. And we have one minute and 15 seconds left in the penalty to Magnuson. Esposito losing it to Berenson. And right here, the West doing another great job. Killing off a penalty. Now Orr to Dave Ballone with Esposito, Cornoyer, and Rattel. Esposito into the corner. White playing it to the board. Ballone back to the point. Bobby Orr keeping it in there. Orr in for Dave Ballone. Ballone against White. And it's loose now to Pitt Martin. And Martin sends it down the ice. Bobby Hall stepping on. Berenson comes off. 35 seconds left. Or ahead to Esposito. Now it's Peter Mahovlich trying to get by White. And Pitt Martin shooting the puck down to Vilmure. Magnuson standing up. He still has 20 seconds. He's getting very anxious to get back on Gilbert Perrault. Up on the wing. He still has it over the line. Into the corner. White. It's loose now. Cornwaye centering it. A pass for Bobby Hall. Hall down against Bobby Orr. It's over the line. Harrell clearing it up on the wing to center. Esposito races up for it, and the penalized player is back on or feeding it to the right side. Westfall going in against Harris. White. Ahead for Bobby Hall. On the other side, it's flat. Bobby Hall winds up for the shot. Oh, that was a whistling drive, and Vilmure right in front of it. Or out slowly. Dallas Smith moving up with Peter Mahovlich and Gilbert Perrault at the line, and Makita stopping it against Orr. And we get a stoppage in play. 8.53 left in the game, the West leading 2-1. to one. Ben, we've had some great moves on that uh, defense for the West. I thought Bill White, Barkley Plager, Ted Harris have been especially effective in this last period of clearing that puck. Dennis Hall to Magnuson. Now then, Plager. It's slapped in by Tremblay. Magnuson. Ahead to Flett. Harrell falling. Pass goes finally to Magnuson to Dennis Hall on the left side. He cleared it to the other side. Here's Flett going in. Takes the high drive off the corner glass. Dennis Hall bumped Westfall. Now Flett back into Dennis Hall. J.C. Tremblay. Hall goes after him. Tremblay upended heavily in the corner. Here's Makita getting it out in front. Flett is checked. And the West going to the attack. Now back to Magnuson, and he fired it wide. Tremblay trying to get something organized for the East. It goes to Perrault at center. He's in on the left side. Perrault still has it. Around the left. Center to the right. West ball was checked by Dennis Hall. Now J.C. Tremblay back into Perrault. Perrault on the board. Lager getting it out for Makita. Makita. Against Westfall. Now Barkley Plager, a good rushing defenseman over the line. And there's another hand for Gilbert Perrault. He's going to stand out tonight. J.C. Tremblay. Last goes to Peter Mahovlich. Now he goes to the boards for it. Mahovlich still with it. Finally out over the line. Westfall to Keon. Keon couldn't get by Magnuson. Magnuson. Down he comes. Danny Grant had that pass go behind him. In the center ice area, they fight for it. And Pitt Martin comes up with it. Ahead it goes, and Ecclestone was riding in there but couldn't make contact. J.C. Trombley. Checked by Ecclestone. Pitt Martin tried to get through. Now Gordy Howe. 
A pass intercepted by Ecclestone over to Pitt Martin. Pitt Martin. He couldn't set up his man Ecclestone. Up on the wing to Frank Mahavli. Mahavli winds up for the shot. He's wide with it. Danny Grant. Clearing it to center. Brad Park. Mahavli back in on the left side. Making a nice move to go to the corner. Trying to center it. Mahavli knocked to the ice by White. Now Mahavli getting it back for Keon. Here's Jim Nielsen. Getting set for a shot. Back roll. Forty Howe trying to get it. Now taking it out of harm's way, Danny Grant. Ecclestone on the far side. Frank Mahavli keeping it in. He winds up for the shot. Changes direction. Forty Howe trying to center it. Howe in the corner. Centers it. Keon right over foot. Oh, a shot by Frank Mahavli. And he had the time goal right on his stick. From the Boston Garden, the NHL All-Star game. Uh, Bob, Frank Mahovlich has a great scoring opportunity there. A great move by Howe knocking it down, and then Dave Keon made a beautiful pass from behind his back to Frank. So the East applying the pressure, the West leading 2-1, to 547 remaining. Here's Berenson speeding in there. Berenson centering it, and failing to come up with it was Sabarak. Bobby Hall is the other forward for the West All-Stars, Brad Park. Playing it to Hodge. Hodge clearing it over on the far wing. Music scooping it in. In the east, moving in. Ted Harris playing it on the board. And it's back to center. Now Jim Nielsen. Bobby Hall handing it off to Ted Harris. Hodge stopping it with his foot in the skate outside the line, bringing it in for the offside. As I look at uh, Red Berenson, number seven, the captain of St. Louis, and he's been a, a tireless performer tonight as well as all through the season. I think Red Berenson's the type of hockey player you can count on game in and game out 100% all the time. Now it's over. And the crowd here, and I should imagine because of the Bruins, all in favor of the Bruins leading the attack. There's Bobby Orr taking the shot. Now Esposito clearing it in. Roberts knocking on the board. Bobby Hall picking it up. He's down against Bobby Orr. Hall trying to get by Orr. Hall into the corner it goes. Back to the line. Ted Harris shooting it in. Off the board. Bobby Hall centering it. Here's Roberts winding up for a shot. Knocked out in front. Loose puck and it's cleared into the corner. Music. Less than five minutes remaining. Hodge checked by Ted Harris. Bobby Orr starting out on the line ahead of close to Busey. Busey over the line. Busey trying to get in front. Berenson picking it up for the West. Berenson got by Busey. A nice move to get by Hodge over to Bobby Hull. Ahead across the line. Sabaran winds up, fakes the shot. And Orr turning around to Hodge. Hodge to Dallas Smith. Alan Smith to Esposito, Esposito over the line. And Bobby Hull doing some fine back checking in this period particularly. Got it and knocked it to center. We started to mention that the fans here would want a, an East victory because of the predominance of the Bruins, of course, on the All-Star team. And they realize time is becoming a vital factor and they're beginning to get noisy. Now Flett into Dennis Hull. Hull into the corner, trying to center it. Here's Flett taking the shot. Out come the East. Dave Malone over to Hodge. Rattel on the far wing. Hodge shooting it. Stopped there by Wakeley. Behind the net, Barkley Plager. Plager cleared it off the boards. Down it goes. And Dale Tallon knocks it to center. Here's Cornwaye. Cornwaye over the line. Cornwaye passing it back to Rattel. And he just failed to get it. Out to center, Makita. Dennis Hall on the far side into the corner. Vilmuir clearing it back in there. Flett. Flett trying to center it. He's been very aggressive tonight. Flett shooting it. Back it goes to Magnuson, the high drive. J.C. Tremblay. Two minutes and 40 seconds left. Rattel down with Cornwall and Dave Ballone. Rattel losing it. Makita has it. Couldn't get very far against Talon. Cornwallier to Talon. Coming in over the line. 
Allen getting set. The shot. Oh! He just missed the far side with that low drive. Now Clark trying to catch up with it. Dave Talon over to Gordy Howe to comes for Rattel. He couldn't get it. Deckel Stone. Back to Magnuson. Now then Stapleton. A long lead pass. Ecclestone trying to catch up with it. Now Cornoyer over the line. Called on the offside. Two minutes and one second left. This game is coming to you from the Boston Garden. I see Vilmeur over there talking to Coach Sinden. And with 2.01 left, no doubt he's looking for instructions. If Sinden wants him to leave, if the play should go down into the west zone. Right now, face off in the east area. West leading two to one. Perro is on with Frank Mahovlich and Gordy Howe. Brad Park took it out of harm's way. Here's Bill White winding up for the shot. Vilmio is stopping it on the short side. Now, Lee's trying to get down the ice. They can't get out. Danny Grant over to Ecclestone. A shot goes off Brad Park. In the west, right up on top of the east, trying to hem them in. And they're doing a fine job so far. It comes to center. Stapleton clearing it back. Now Frank Mahavali passing it to Brad Park. Park pass to center. And Clark sending the east back into their own zone. Now Nielsen coming out over the line. Goes to center. They shoot it in. In there goes Gordy Howe. Here's Carroll against Stapleton. Sabaran giving it to Harrison. Less than a minute, 56 seconds. Here's Bobby Orr. Orr clearing it up for Perro. And now Vilmeur coming out of the net. Six attackers for the East. Stapleton ahead to Bobby Hall. Hall shooting it off the board. And Rattel back in his own zone for the East. To Gordy Howe. Out it goes to Frank Mahavli. Mahavli leaves it on the left side. Brad Park shooting it in. Here's Ted Harris laying it on the board. It's stopped by Bobby Orr. Orr taking it in with Rattel over to Orr. Back on the board to Rattel. Frank Mahavli tries to get it. Orr has it. There's the shot. Carroll knocked it down. It comes loose in front of the net. And it's cleared by Ted Harris. 15 seconds remaining. Bobby Orr keeping it back in there. Ted Harris clearing it to Bill White. Gordy Howe going after him. It's shot down the ice. Bobby Orr racing to save seconds. Two seconds. And the faceoff will be down to the right of Wakeley. Two to one. The West leading on goals by Mackey and Bobby Hull. Cornwallier scoring for the East. Two seconds, Bob. Can they put that puck in the net? Well, uh, I noticed Scotty Bowman did something that we've seen over the years, Dan. He sent out uh, a number 21, Stan Makita, for this all-important face-off. And I don't know how many times that you've seen Billy Ray do the same thing with Chicago. And uh, there probably isn't anyone better at getting that face-off, unless it might be the guy he's facing off against, Bill Esposito. This is going to be an interesting face-off. And now the puck has dropped. It's, it's called back. Somebody had moved, Friday indicating. And one second. They're, they put it down to one second. They bring it back to two. So no time was consumed. Still two seconds. Now D'Amico. Now Mahavlich, Frank, and Ted Harris mixing it up. Should we all go home? I don't know what that siren means. There's still two seconds. Now the puck is dropped. Howe took a swipe at it. And the game is over. And for the first time, the West winning it 2-1. In just a moment, our three-star selection. Foster, in a game of all-stars, did you have uh, trouble picking three? Well, of course, uh, nothing but stars out there. But uh, I thought the number one star, no question tonight, was uh, Bobby Orr. Uh, he controlled that puck all the time he was on the ice. He skated miles. And at the same time, being a Boston Bruin player, I think he got the best reaction from the crowd, which helped a bit, too. But he was really the uh, top man tonight. Uh, as for the second star, I uh, picked Bobby Hull. Uh, he was the uh, home run hitter, more or less. He zoomed a number of shots there uh, in typical style. And uh, he was a constant threat, and he did get one goal. 
And then as to the newcomers, I thought Gilles Perrault uh, rated a third star. He uh, put on a great show there on two or three shifts in the second period in particular, and was pretty good there in spots in the third period. Thank you very much, uh, Foster Hewitt. Hockey Night in Canada continues in just a moment. Do you, do you fellows really enjoy this, uh, this all-star break? Do you really uh, enjoy getting together and uh, meeting each other in Boston? Oh, yes. Well, when we're on the ice, uh, we're out to win, so there might be the odd scrap and the, uh, the hard charge. But when we get off the ice, we have a great time. They're all great fellows. Uh, I don't think you find too many bad apples in any sport. And uh, I haven't found any in, in the game of hockey yet, and I'm sure it's the same in all sports. I know those of us who came to Boston for the all-star game are tremendously impressed with the fan reaction around here, not only for the Bruins, but for... High school hockey, small fry hockey. I understand they draw tremendous crowds in the area. They sure do. They have uh, uh, college tournaments, high school tournaments right here in the gardens, and then they'll sell the gardens out for a high school tournament. And uh, same with basketball, it's the same with all sports, but uh, hockey is really catching on down this area. Now, what happens now? These players, some of them have to be playing tomorrow night on the West Coast. That's right. Uh, so, uh, the Vancouver player, Dale Talon. Greg Polis. Uh, uh, Greg Polis. They, they leave tomorrow Polis. morning at 7.30, and uh, they'll be out in Vancouver sometime tomorrow and play okay. tomorrow night. And uh, some of the New York players are leaving right now. They had to try to play because they play tomorrow night in New York and uh, other cities. How about you and the Bruins? Now? We're very lucky. We don't play till Saturday. <laughs> but you have some tough ones coming up, don't we you? We have a tough weekend coming up. We have Chicago and Montreal, and that's going to be a tough weekend. Everybody thinks the Bruins are almost home free for first place. How do the Bruins themselves look at that with New York so close behind? Well, we don't think we're home free yet. Uh, a little earlier in the season, we had, I think, a six or seven point lead on New York. And uh, we, were, we had a one-point lead for almost two, uh, for two weeks or more. And uh, we were fortunate this week to get a three-point lead, but uh, it doesn't take long to, to lose that three points. And you got to watch Montreal and Toronto. They're only 14 points, I think, behind us. You, you, of course, your teammate Phil is a shoe-in for the scoring title, don't you think? Oh, yeah. This guy, he's, he's incredible. <laughs> You're not going to catch him? Oh, no. <laughs> no chance. Uh, this guy's an incredible hockey player, and you got to sit and watch him. You, you're, you're playing tremendous hockey yourself, as usual, Bobby. Thank and you, congratulations on being named the number one Thank star Thank you very tonight. much. Bobby Orr of the Boston Bruins. Hockey Night in Canada continues in just a moment. highlight you took from that because there were some good ones. The Power of the East, <laughs> when uh, Brad Park, Nielsen, Mahovlic, Keon, and Howe put on that pressure when uh, Wakely, I don't know how he got across the net to stop Mahovlic, but Mahovlic had five or six chances. This just wasn't Frank's night. Mm -hmm. Here, Here you see it. There's big Frank going in the corner. He gets taken out of the play. Gordy goes around and Frank gets it back to, Frank gets over to that point. There's Nielsen. There, there's Nielsen. Then you'll see how from the, you'll see how when he gets over the corner, give it to Keon, and Keon makes a terrific play. There's the big M. He blasts one from there. Puck goes over the corner. Now here's where Howe makes a lovely little pass. See Keon yeah, make that right back pass. Oh. How Frank missed that one. There was the tire right yeah. there. That was a, that was really showing just sheer power. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of a power play. I, I just don't know how Big Frank missed that. And, of course, he had two other chances, too. But look at this dainty little pass. Now, here's a lovely back pass. See Big Frank on that? And I, I yeah. thought for a while that he'd missed it, but uh, Wakely really... Yeah, he got, got over there. Huh? Yeah, he got over there for... Uh, uh, how these goaltenders... Look at Esposito tonight, you know. He was just outstanding. And then Jock come in on two or three plays with uh, Bobby Hull. You know, these goaltenders today are just out of this world. I just don't know how the reflexes, how they can get over there so quick, and they have to, and many, many times. Thank you, babe. Nice having you with us. Three stars once again, Bobby Orr, Bobby Hall, and Gilbert Perot. Now, next Saturday, the Red Wings will be playing the Canadians in the Forum, and that will be coast to coast on the CBC network. And then next Wednesday, the 27th, and again at the Forum, the St. Louis Blues will be the visitors, so check the TV listings. Final score, the West 2, the East 1 for Hockey Night in Canada. Ward Cornell, good night, everyone.
Hockey Night in Canada, brought to you by Imperial Oil and Esso Dealers, Agents, and Distributors. Ford, the better idea company with better products for you. And by Canadian National, CN in Action, building the Canadian dream. Hockey Night in Canada is protected by copyright. Unauthorized reproduction by any means, in whole or in part, is not permitted. This is the CBC Television Network.